The new year is upon us and so many people think that they have to wait for the new year to come in like January 1st before they actually start making plans for the new year. Sis, I hope that's not you, but if it is, no worries. I want to help you shift that mindset and we're going to start making some plans now, like today, okay? So don't wait. Let's start making plans for the new year and you'll find out how right after this. Hey sis, welcome to Goodbye Heartbreak, Hello Healing. Are you hurt and confused after a recent breakup? Are you having thoughts like, I can't believe I'm here again. Why wasn't I enough for him? Or I'm never going to get married. Do you find yourself Googling how to get past the breakup or how to heal my broken heart? Do you start your morning feeling like you can finally breathe again only to fall apart when you see a picture of your ex on social media? Hey sis, I'm Candace. I too was a single Christian woman who was heartbroken but still desired marriage. I too had numerous failed relationships and wished the right man would come along. I wanted closure from past relationships, healing for my heart, and I wanted to feel joy in my life again. But the truth is, I had no idea where to start or how to make any of this happen until I found the secret, partnering with God to heal from heartbreak. In this podcast, you will find tips for moving on after breakups growing your relationship with God and preparing for future relationships so that you will heal your heart and be ready to move forward into the life you desire. So turn off those heartbreak songs and turn me up in those earbuds. It's time to heal, sis. Hey sis, and welcome back for another episode of Goodbye Heartbreak, Hello Healing. I'm so excited that you're joining me on today. And Merry Late Christmas. I'm a day late. Uh, I hope you enjoyed your holiday yesterday and really just this whole holiday season. Again, I know it may not be what you thought it would be this year, but I hope that you are just soaking it all in and thanking God that you're still here for another chance and another Christmas holiday. I hope that last week's episode really helped helped you uh, kind of work through things with that journal prompt. I really hope it was beneficial for you. And we're going to keep it rolling on today. Um, before we get into it, sis, if you haven't subscribed to the podcast, go ahead and do that. Hit your subscribe button wherever you are listening. And also, if you have not yet left your five-star written review, go ahead, write a review on Apple Podcasts so we know how you feel about the show, what you think about it, and so that other people can come in and see see, hey, what is it all about? So go ahead, leave that review. Also, sis, have you joined our free Facebook community? We have a free Facebook community where like-minded women come together. We're able to connect and chat and we talk more about the episodes and we talk about other things and receive encouragement from one another and you pray with one another and it's really great. So I hope that you will come join us if you haven't already. And just an announcement about uh, those of you who are joining the group. I've been getting a lot of requests without people answering the membership questions and agreeing to the group rules. Those two things are a necessity in order to get into the group. So if you came and you hit request for uh, joining the group and you haven't heard anything or you were denied, it's because you have not answered the membership questions and agreed to the group rules. So come on back, do that, and we'll get you right in. We cannot wait to have you. We love you so much, and we want you to come and join us in the group. Sis, are you struggling to connect with God since your breakup? Do you want to know what God has to say about healing your broken heart? Do you need encouragement every day in this season? I know this feeling all too well. Just like you, I struggle to connect with God and find encouragement after a life-altering breakup. Because of this, I created for you the thing that I would have needed to help and encourage me back then, which is my 365 day devotional, Goodbye Heartbreak, Hello Purpose. One of my readers, Yin, is loving this devotional so much. She said, every day of your devotional was almost like God ministering to me. If you have been able to see the jottings I have had in this book each day, you have been able to see how God has been ministering and working his healing hands in me many days. I have never enjoyed daily devotion as much as I have with your devotional. Sis and bro, because I know y'all listening to, it's time to get your copy of my book. Every day, you will get a scripture from the Bible, 
a devotion of me sharing my experiences and what I learned and a biblically based affirmation. And there's no better time to buy than now. The New Year's sale is happening now until January 3rd because I want to make sure you get your copy in time for the new year. Order now and use the discount code NEW24 at checkout to get 24% off the only devotional you'll need for 2024. But get yours today because the supply is limited. Hurry over to CandiceABaddies.com forward slash shop to get your devotional so you can begin connecting with God in a fresh way as you heal your broken heart. Check the show notes for details. Now, let's get back to the show. So, what are we talking about today? Sis, do you realize 2024 is coming in hot? Okay, we have less than a week before the new year comes in. And I want to make sure you're ready. If you're not ready yet, it's not too late to get ready. We're not going to wait till January 1st comes in to start preparing for the new year. Now, if you are listening to this on January 1st or afterwards, it's okay. You're going to start where you're at. Okay. You're going to get ready. But if you're listening to this before January 1st says, I want you to take these tips and start getting ready for the new year now. Okay. I don't want you to wait until January 1st, the clock strike midnight to say, Oh, what am I going to do? What am I doing this year? What are my goals? You know, you don't have to wait for that. So let's talk about that. I want to give you some tips on how to make this happen right now. Number one, reflect on this past year, okay? Look at your goals. Did you set goals, first of all, right? If you did it, then you won't have goals to reflect on, but you can reflect on your experiences, things that have happened, uh, emotions that you felt frequently, like what were some big milestones for you? Start reflecting on those things. But if you did um, have goals, did you reach your goals? If you didn't, Um, What happened there? What stopped you from reaching your goals? Also, talk about the things that you liked about this past year and things that you didn't like. Talk about your successes, your lessons, okay? I don't necessarily like to call them failures, but your lessons that you've learned this year, okay? Really take some time to reflect on 2023 and what all happened during this time frame, okay? Number two, spend time in prayer, all right? So, This is a perfect time to show gratitude to God for bringing you through this year. Again, I know that it may not have been what you wanted it to be. If you're here because you have dealt with a breakup, divorce, some type of separation, I know that that is not where you wanted to find yourself this year. And you're hurting. You wouldn't be here if you were not hurting. So I still want you to thank God because He has something for you on the other side of this. This is not the end. You're in the middle of something right now, okay? But it is a journey through. So thank him for being with you in the midst of heartbreak. Thank him for being with you and bringing you through another year so that you have a chance to get things right, to get to live the life that you want to live, okay, to get the desires of your heart, because those things still await you. You have healing work that needs to be done indeed, but there are great things on the other side of your healing, all right? So give thanks to God and then pray about what next year should look like for you. What is God's plan for you? So, you know, you don't have to know his full grand plan for your life, like your whole entire life. But you can just say, God, what would you have me focus on for next year? Do you have a word that I should be keeping in mind for next year? Is there an assignment for me next year? Like, what is it that God would have you do? So you can start making plans based on that. Number three, spend time dreaming. So one thing that can help you with what it is that you want to set goals for, what you would want your life to look like, is to actually take time to dream. And I know this is sometimes hard after a breakup, after heartbreak, because you you think about the memories from your past, but because of how things have worked out, sometimes you're afraid to dream about what your future could be. And you're fearful because things just didn't work out for you this time. So you don't want to feel this again. You don't want to go through this again. So dreaming doesn't seem um, like something you want to do right now. But sis, I'm telling you, take some time and dream about what you really want your life to look like. 
And just one caveat, it's always the same thing. I say, leave your ex out of that dream, okay? Dream of a life without your ex and see what comes up for you. See what you can envision for yourself, all right? And I, I'm telling you, like, that dreaming, taking time to actually just think about what your life could be like, what you desire it to be, is powerful, It can really drive your goals. It drives your actions. It drives your prayers, you know, so it could help you get focused for next year. Number four, after you have reflected on this past year, you spent time in prayer and you spent time dreaming, go ahead and choose your goals. All right. So that's the last thing you do. Choose your goals after you have done those previous three things, because after you have done those things, then you should have a much better idea of what your focus should be for next year. You should have a much better idea of what your goals should be and creating a plan to achieve those goals. All right. So let's uh, recap that really quick, because those are the four things that you can do today. Right. You can start this process today to help you get started for January 2024, all right? Number one, reflect on this past year. Number two, spend time in prayer. Number three, spend time dreaming. Number four, choose your goals. And I also have a bonus for you here, okay? So after you've done these four things and the fourth thing was choosing your goals, the bonus is to create a vision board, all right? So I love a good vision board, all right? I didn't create one last year, but I was, before that, like, I was so adamant about it after I saw the power of it one year. So I can't even remember what year it was, maybe 2015, maybe somewhere around there. I created a vision board to, um, I was really working on paying off debt. And, you know, I was like, I wanted financial freedom. I wanted to see these things. And so I had several credit cards that I needed to pay off. And I had uh, a car with a card note that I wanted to pay off. And all these things, that student loans, I had all of this stuff. So I created a vision board and I would put like one credit card on it at a time. I was like, I had a working vision board where I had, you know, I had scriptures, I had all these pictures, and then I would put a picture of a credit card that I wanted to pay off. And I used the snowball method and I went ahead and I would pay off a card, you know, put put money towards it, extra money that I got towards it, and I would pay the card off. And then whatever money I was putting on the card, I would put towards the next card. And so when it was time for me to pay the next card, I put that card on the vision board and that became my focus until I paid off all of my credit cards. I was able to do that. And I also put my car up there after I paid off the last credit card, I put my car up there and I ended up paying that off as well. So I'm telling you, I was like, once I saw the power of the vision board, I was like, I'm sold. I'm sold on it. Okay. And all of this is just a visual representation of your goals and your desires and what you want your life to look like. And so I've become a lot more careful about it because I don't want to just put anything up there. I like to go in prayer first. I like to know what it is that God would have me focus on before I actually create a vision board. But my husband and I actually created one together uh, and before we had our daughter. And it's like we put... Uh, a house up there. We put kids up there. We put the names of our kids up there. And I remember after we had my daughter, we took her name down. And I was like, you know what, take that other name down because my original, my plan was to have twins. Okay. And I wanted a boy and a girl. And that was it. It didn't happen like that. Had a girl. So I was like, take the boy name down because pregnancy was hard. I don't think I want to do it again. And we did. We took it down. And my husband was like, oh, something in my spirit is telling me we should put it back up. And so we did, we put it back up. And then before you know it, baby number two was here. The house came and just everything, like things were working in his business, things were working for me um, professionally that I had on the vision board, just all of these things came to pass. And so I'm telling you, it's very um, it's very beneficial. It, it can be very fruitful to create a vision board. Uh, I love it so much It's I put that as like a bonus a training video in the course, like at the very end is creating your own vision board. And I give you a template and I do a training on how to do that at the very end of grieving the living, because you want to have hope for the future. Okay. 
like I said, uh, that's a bonus for you. After you do these four things that I've talked about, create a vision board that reflects what it is your 2024 should look like. All right. So sis, I love you so much. Thank you for joining me for this episode. And you know, this is, our, this is the last episode in this year. And so I want you to know that I am praying for you. I'm praying with you as you journey over into the next year, because I am believing that healing awaits you. I'm believing that joy awaits you, that peace awaits you. And I know, sis, if you do the work and you trust God through this process, that he will absolutely bring those things to pass in your life. All right. So again, I love you, sis. Join us in the Facebook group and I will talk to you again really soon. Bye. Hey, sis, listen, if you've been blessed, changed or inspired by this podcast in any way, please subscribe to the podcast and leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. This is the number one way that you can thank me and show support for the show. Also, if this podcast blessed you, don't keep it to yourself. Do a quick share and bless someone else. Please know I am so grateful for each and every one of you, and I would love to hear from you. Come connect with me and other like-minded individuals in my Facebook group called Christian Women Overcoming Heartbreak and Finding Purpose. I can't wait to meet you back here really soon. Until then, remember to love the life you have while you're making it better. Love you, sis.